Megan? Can Megan say hello, Hama? Hello. Hey guys, it's you here. Today I want to share with you guys some weight loss tips that I did that helped me lose weight. These tips have made my weight loss journey so effortless compared to the things I did in the past to lose weight. So I hope by applying these tips, you guys will find them useful and make your weight loss easier as well. In the past, I always thought that there was something wrong with my body because I wasn't able to lose any weight, but then now I know that that is not the case. If you're feeling hopeless and struggling with your weight loss, just know that I've been there, there's still light in the end of the tunnel, and I'm already through it, and I'm here to help you guys. After I gave birth to my daughter, I was around two to three kilos higher than my pre-baby weight. And then without intentionally exercising or diet or anything, um, my weight came down to my pre-baby weight. Now this weight is actually a few kilos higher than my um, goal weight, my personal weight that I feel happy in. I'm not saying that being at a lighter weight is better, but for me personally, I feel uh, more comfortable physically and more confident in a lighter weight. So I've been a victim in that negative cycle before, which is um, restricting my food intake, over-exercising, binging, and the yo-yo effect on my weight. So I've learned to be happy at my heavier weight, but the desire to be at my goal weight is always there. So then, after I gave birth, I decided that this is a great opportunity to try dieting again and make it my last diet ever. I have succeeded and maintained at this weight for a year now and I hope that this video can help you guys as well. Now before we get to the tips, there's something really important that you guys need to know before losing weight, which is all about caloric deficits and TDEE. Now, if you guys already know about caloric deficits and TDEE, you guys can just skip to the tips. There'll be timestamps below. I have my notes right here. So TDEE is basically your total daily energy expenditure or the total daily calories that you burn per day. So BMR is your basal metabolic rate which is the amount of energy used by your body and cells and organs just to survive. And the next one is NEAT, which is non-exercise activity thermogenesis, which is a non-sport-like um, energy expenditure such as walking, talking, lifting, wiggling your fingers, fidgeting. TEF is a um, thermic effect of food, which is the energy required by your body to digest and absorb your food and of course exercise. Now I wish I knew about this in the past because in the past I always thought that if I eat something they will immediately be turned into fat. But now we know that that's not the case because um, according to the equation some of the calories that you eat will go into your BMR, your NEAT, your TEF and if you exercise your calories are going to you, you exercising. Now, if you eat more than your TDEE, then your body will turn those extra energy into fat. So basically, the only way to lose weight or lose fat is to be in a caloric deficit, which is to eat lower than your TDEE, but more than your BMR. Now, you should not be eating below your BMR because that's the amount of calories that your body needs to just to survive and function healthily and properly. So eating below that amount, like I did in the past, can cause lots of negative effects on your body, such as loss of period, lower metabolism, and putting too much stress and restricting your body too much, and this may lead to a binge. You can find your BMR and TDEE amount in Google. You can just type in and find it out. Keep in mind that the amount that you find is just an approximate and may not be 100% accurate. These tips will help you stick to your diet easier and stay in a caloric deficit. 
So this one is pretty self-explanatory. If you don't have them lying around in your house, the temptation is not there in the first place, so you won't eat it. So for me, if I have a bag of chips lying around in the house, I will most definitely find it and eat the whole bag. Eating lower calorie dense foods. These foods are naturally lower in calories and higher in volume, which helps you feel full for longer. So the number one reason that diets fail is because of hunger, so this helps with that. So low calorie dense foods are usually whole foods, um, such as fruits, vegetables, tofu, everything that can be found in nature are whole foods. I limit my processed foods as much as I can. I still eat the three food groups, fats, carbs, and proteins, but I tend to lean more towards the protein and carbs because fats are high in calories. I still eat them, but please be mindful about them. Remember, it's all about calories in, calories out, and being in a caloric deficit to lose weight. So the lower the calories that you eat, the more you can eat within your caloric limit. For me, I would eat around 70% um, whole foods and 30% soul foods. So soul foods are foods that I find tasty and makes my soul happy and keeps me satisfied and make it easier for me to stick to my diet. Food is essential not only for health but for enjoyment too. Soul foods for me would be desserts and if I cut them out um, during my diet, I will feel too restricted and not as happy. Now soul foods are typically higher in calories and take a lot of your caloric limit. Now, if you're fine with that, then that's okay. But for me, I like to eat more. So this leads us to tip number three. So one of my soul foods would be scones and one original scone would be around like 200 to 300 calories or more. So I would either make my own lower calorie version of a scone or find another brand that are lower in calories. So I live in Thailand and there's a brand that I found that um, sells scones at around like 140 calories each. So now I can eat like two times the amount compared to like eating one original scone. Another example would be peanut butter. Instead of eating the full fat version, you can change it to um, the powdered peanut butter version. Basically, you can eat more food for the same caloric amount. Lower calorie foods can also be tasty and granted they won't 100% taste like the original but for me they are good enough. I am willing to compensate for these lower calorie treats because for me they still taste great but the best part for me is that I get to eat more food and not feel like I'm in a diet so much. Be careful of small things such as sauces, salad dressings, um, sweeteners. The calories in some of these can be pretty high and the calories can pile on fast. Remember, it's all about being in a caloric deficit, so don't add on too much unnecessary calories into a caloric limit. Make small changes, use a lower calorie sauce, um, choose a lower calorie dressing. Instead of sugars, use those um, zero calorie sweeteners instead, such as stevia. Please be mindful of cooking oils. If you can, spray the pan instead of pouring on the oil because you can pour in a lot of calories without realizing it. Don't drink your calories. Drink zero calorie drinks instead. If you want to drink your calories, it's fine as well. But for me personally, I would rather um, save those calories for eating instead. So if your soul food is a cup of matcha, then have it. So for example, if you're drinking Coke, switch it to Diet Coke. So these lower calorie drinks can also be very tasty and you're not adding calories into your caloric limit. And of course, you should drink lots of water during the diet. Firstly, because it's good for you. Secondly, you may feel peckish and want to eat something even though you're full. And when you drink water, the feeling goes away. Make meal plans that are suitable for you. Whatever works for you, it can be six small meals, three meals, two big meals, and at whatever time you want. You don't have to be eating um, at a certain time to lose weight or fasting. Intermittent fasting and other fat diets out there are not some magical ways to lose weight. They are just methods to help keep you in a caloric deficit. But if you find that those diets work for you, then you can do it. Personally, I like to eat um, huge amounts in one sitting, so I would do two large meals. 
counting your calories and weighing your food. If you don't like counting your calories or you find it too triggering, you don't have to do it. I just personally find this way to be more helpful and accurate to stay on track and be in a caloric deficit. If you're too triggered to get on the scales every day, you can do it every three days. Just think of the scales as providing you with the data, that's all. But you have to step on the scales to check in on your progress to see if you're still on track. If the scales are not budging, then you're not in a caloric deficit, so you have to adjust accordingly. Another thing to be mindful about is that you should not be losing weight too fast. If you lose weight too fast, high chances are you're not losing only fat, but muscle mass as well. The rule of thumb is to lose 1% of body weight per week. Slow and steady is the key. So guys, you have to be patient as well. You didn't gain weight overnight. It's a long period of time that you gained weight. So please don't expect to lose weight in a short period of time as well. Weight fluctuations are expected. For example, during that time of the month or too much salt retention if you ate something salty. So please just keep those in mind and just see the trends. So week by week, if the trend is that your scales um, are dropping, then it's okay. If you don't want to exercise, then it's okay as well. It's all about being in a caloric deficit. Exercising just makes your fat loss faster because you're burning more calories. If you don't like exercising, that's fine. You can just increase your need by walking. My personal goal is to hit 8,000 steps per day. You can do that as well instead of exercising if you prefer. I like to do weights and steady state cardio like walking. I don't do hits because I don't like them personally. Remember, lifting weights is for building your muscle mass and cardio is for burning more calories. Some people like to do empty stomach exercises to burn more fat, but essentially it's all about calories in, calories out. If you're in a deficit, then you're losing weight and losing fat. I don't exercise every day, I just exercise when I feel like it. And be aware not to be in the mindset of burning a certain amount of calories during your exercise because that's really stressful and not in a good mindset and it won't last long. Just focus on the good feeling when you're exercising and that you feel more alive and doing some good for your health. It's okay to skip a workout if you don't feel physically or mentally up for it. Tip number 10 is a way to handle your urge to binge or pig out on your diet. It is normal during your diet that there will be some moments that you just couldn't take it anymore and that you just want to eat everything in sight and shove high calorie foods in your face. When this happens, you can refer to tip number five, which is drink more water or zero calorie drinks to see if you still want the food. If that still doesn't help and that you still want to binge, then do this instead. Instead of picking out immediately on thousands of calories on your favorite foods and setting yourself back a long time, I like to first pick out on a huge bowl of salad with light dressing, of course, or a huge tub of Greek yogurt and eat that till I feel really, really full. After that, I will see if I still want to pick out on the foods that I wanted in the first place or not. By doing this, I usually don't feel the need to binge anymore or sometimes I do still want the food and I would still have it but I could only have a small amount because my belly is too full. This method can save you a lot of calories than if you were to immediately eat it on an empty stomach. Now after your binge, don't beat yourself up or feel guilty about your binge. One or two slip ups won't immediately eliminate all your hard work. FYI, it takes an excess of 3,500 calories on top of your TDEE in order to gain a mere 0.5 kilograms of fat, which will of course be distributed across your whole body. The day after I pig out, I won't immediately step on the scales. I will wait around three to four days to step on the scales again. Personally, I would feel a little triggered with the scales if I would immediately um, step on the scales the next day. I know that that is not all fat. You know that mainly it is water weight So there is no need to make yourself feel bad in the first place So for my peace of mind, I will wait three to four days before stepping on the scales again So these are the 10 tips that I find to be very helpful physically and mentally on my weight loss journey Now if you guys use these tips and succeeded or still on your weight loss journey I would love to hear back from you guys. So please leave comments below. I would love to see the progress you've made. 
or if you guys have questions regarding my tips please also ask them as well now it is normal to feel discouraged during your weight loss journey just know that everyone is feeling the same thing and not just you just focus on your goal and keep moving upwards and eventually you will get there Along the way to your goal, your eating and exercising won't be on point, which is perfectly normal because my eating and exercising is not on point as well. Just pick yourselves up and continue onwards. Good luck, guys. You're eliminating a lot of unnecessary calories. Can we go baby shark? You can baby shark? Okay, ma. Mommy, you can't because you are you, right? Hmm? Yeah. Ah. 